Jesus Christ pleased with my music, my entertainment. I'm talking about a real Christian, folks. The race will always be easier for us when we keep our eyes and focus on what does the Lord Jesus Christ think? Am I taking this opportunity to witness that he has opened the door for me to have? We're so concerned about what he thinks. That's a good Christian runner. But let me tell you what the problem is. And you see this all the time, even at Shank Baptist Church, no doubt. Let me tell you what the problem is. Years ago, when I lived in Chicago, I was on pastoral staff of a very large church. I was the singles pastor. I think maybe I shared this with you on Sunday. If you want to know what that is, a singles pastor is basically a youth pastor, only his youth group has money. Um, you're dealing with single adults in their late teens, early 20s, kind of Kevin's age. And uh, they were a lot of fun. They really were. But I remember one night coming home from the office, and I was wearing an outfit similar to what I'm wearing now, a coat and tie. It was a Thursday night, so there was nothing on the church calendar. Thursday night, they tried to keep open. I walked into the front door of our house, our home there in Chicago, made a beeline to the kitchen where I knew my wife was. <coughs> and sure enough, there she was, making dinner. She's a good cook. Excellent cook. And she was doing something, folks, that she always does when she's cooking. I had installed a little five-inch color TV under the cover of TV, wired cable to it so that she could watch one of her two favorite stations. She has two favorite stations she loves to watch. She loves to watch the news. Whether it's Fox News or local news, she loves the news. She's the daughter of a decorated journalist. She came by it honestly. She loves to watch the news. When she's not watching the news, this will make you laugh, when she's not watching the news, I guarantee you, She's watching the Weather Channel. <laughs> she loves the news. She loves the Weather Channel. When you're from Mother's Day, I got her a Weather Channel golf shirt, a Weather Channel coffee mug, a Weather Channel thermometer for a zipper. That was a good Mother's Day. I hit a home run. Well, let me tell you folks tonight about your speaker. I hate the news. <laughs> I despise it. I have thrown things at the TV. I get mad at the agenda. That's not even news, most of it. I hate it. This has always been kind of a source of friction in my marriage. Every night before, to this day, every night before we go to bed, we have a TV in our bedroom. And she always wants to see the 1030 news before we go night nights. I've often said to her, sugar, it's going to give us nightmares. But she never, ever, ever gives in. So and she watches her news, and I have to watch it with her sometimes. Oh, I hate it. So I went into the kitchen. My son's in a high chair. My wife is cooking dinner. I gave her a kiss, asked her about her day, gave my son a kiss, and, and then got out of there. I went upstairs to the master bedroom. I was going to change into something comfortable, you know, sweats usually. And while I was up there doing my thing, her sweet little voice came wafting up the stairway. Mike, please come here. I'd like you to see this. Well, people, she's watching the news. <laughs> yeah, right. So I fired back in my honky voice. Lori, no thank you, sugar. I'm good. There was silence. Then that sweet little voice came wafting up again. Michael. And when she says Michael, I'm done. <laughs> Michael, please come here. I really want you to see this. So, those of you with a happy marriage know that's a con confrontation you never win, right? Amen, then? And uh, so I just kind of went down the stairs, out of the best attitude, went into the kitchen, and announced my presence, and said, folks, you know how they do the news, don't you? They show it at 5.30, they repeat the same depressing stuff at 6, right? Well, the 6 o'clock edition is on now. She knows what is coming, and here's what came. Evidently there in the Chicago area the night before, there had been a dog race at a dog racing track, under the lights at night. I don't know if you know anything about dog racing. If you don't, Lord bless it. It's a stupid event, it's nothing but gambling. But what they do is they get these really, really, let me throw a New England word at you, could I please? These wicked fast dogs <laughs> called greyhounds. Each greyhound has a bit with a number on it. They put each greyhound in its own stall. When the race starts, the front of that stall will fly open, and the first thing this muzzled 
dog sees, ladies, muzzled dog sees, is a fake rabbit. That fake rabbit is on an inside rail controlled remotely by somebody up in the stands. They never let the dogs catch that rabbit because if they do, they'll ruin it for racing. They also will spray, I'm told, that rabbit with an aroma that makes a dog go, whoa. <laughs> and so they show the whole race on the news. The front of the stall flew open. It was mad, it was incredibly fast dogs. And these dogs took out to that fake rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit. They went around the corner chasing the rabbit. They went down the back stage. I want the rabbit, I want the rabbit, I want the rabbit, I want the rabbit. Want the rabbit. They came around that last corner about the size of a horse racing track, maybe a little smaller. But as they came around the last corner and they're straightening out to go down the straightaway to the finish line right down there, you are watching this, and forgive my standing on your view, but my feet are clean. You're watching this from a camera up here in the stands. The camera's pointed in this direction, the finish line is down here, and the dogs are coming right at you towards the camera. This is at night. And as those dogs are coming right at you, you see in the lower left-hand corner, and they highlighted it for the news, you see the silhouette of a man who snuck into the racetrack and got up against the wire mesh fence, and just as those greyhounds were rounding that corner and coming down the straightaway, this man tossed right in front of the pack of dogs a live cat. <laughs> a fuzzy cat. Live cat. Threw it over the fence right in front of the dogs. Of course, as cats always do, it landed on all four paws right in front of the dogs. Now, the cat, and by the way, ladies, what did I say these dogs are? Yes, but they don't know that, okay? The dogs don't know that. And so that cat landed right in front of the dogs. The cat was fast, it was quick, light and fast. It swung, ran to the wire mesh fence, went up the wire mesh fence, and slipped out in the dark night to safety. In the wake of that cat, you saw the lead dog, slow motion, fake rabbit, finish line, peripheral vision. Cat. That lead dog swung off course and went full speed right into that wire mesh fence to get that cat. I don't know if you've ever crashed into a wire mesh fence like I have, but they will send you back as fast as you go forward. And so that lead dog went boom, boom. Along, folks, catch this now. Along with all eleven dogs behind him, boom, 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 boom. and you saw the biggest dog wreck, dog pile, hooves, tails, muzzles all over the place, and the race got ruined. The newscasters came back on. They were all laughing. I'm in my kitchen laughing. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I will be dead honest with you. If that always happened at a dog race, I'd go. <laughs> I would go. I would even pay extra to be the cat tosser. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> but listen carefully. Oh, people, what an illustration of what happens to Christians. What an illustration of some of you teenagers. You are not chasing a fake rabbit. We are living for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And every one of us will give an own personal account to the way that we conducted our race here on this earth. We are keeping our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. But every one of us, including your speaker, including your pastor, every one of us have cats, the cats of sin, that your enemy and this world married to your old nature has a way of tossing into your life that gets you off course. It might be the cat of ease, the cat of wealth, the cat of popularity, the cat of fashion, the cat of peer pressure, the cat of vacations, sports world. Oh, how many American Christians have we seen who can't go to church on Sunday night because of some stupid football game? That's somebody who's chasing a cat. Folks, the biggest battle you've got as you're running your race is keeping the main thing, the main thing. 
for us Christians, it is my desire to please the King of Kings. <laughs> Folks, I can't help it. <laughs> I just can't help it. I want to please my Savior. I can't help it. Because I'm a Christian. That's the way Christians are. We want to please our Savior. And I will say this in closing. If you have no desire, young people, you have no desire, sir, to please Jesus Christ in your life, you're probably not a Christian. It's that simple. You're probably not a Christian. And Jesus himself said, there will always be imposters and fakes. But I am pleading with those of you here tonight that know you're saved. What are you doing that counts for eternity? Or are you distracted? Are you getting attacked by a toothless dog? You can have victory. Would you bow your heads, please, and close your eyes? Folks, in a moment here, I'm going to do something a little bit different tonight. I didn't tell your pastor this. I hope he's okay with it. But just put up with this. Would you? I'm a visitor. Because this is one night. I'm going to do something a little bit different. Here in a moment, I'm going to have Kevin play something on the piano. And I want to just invite you, if the Lord is speaking to your heart tonight, or maybe he has spoken to your heart this week, I want to give you an opportunity to come to the old-fashioned altar. The front pew is wide open. If you're physically able, get on your knees and just have some time, some precious time with your Savior. If you're not physically able to, just have a seat on the front pew. But here in a moment, when the piano starts playing, and I'll have you stand in just a moment with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I want to just invite you, if the Spirit of God has been working on your heart tonight and this week, I want to just encourage you, folks, I have never made a decision in my life that stuck, that I didn't take advantage of an invitation. There's just something unique about an invitation. While the Word of God is fresh in your heart, while His Spirit is moving in this room, I'd like to give you an opportunity to react. But before we do, I want to just ask you a question. I wonder if you're here tonight and you'd be willing to say, Brother Mike, I know I'm a Christian. I know I'm saved. But I realize tonight I'm distracted. I'm distracted. It's been a long time since I was concerned with what counts for eternity in my life. And I realize that I've got some issues that I need to take care of. And Mike, would you please pray for me? Please pray for me. God's working in my heart. Would you pray for me? Here's my hand. Would you just quietly slip it up right where you're sitting? God bless you. God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Somebody else. Here's my hand, preacher. Please pray for me. Heavenly Father, in a moment, we're going to stand. And God, I pray that these men and these women, these young people, would not be worried about what other people think. Lord, may they be only concerned tonight with what you think. Would you use this invitation? Would you please bring to this altar those that you would have come? May they have courage. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you quietly stand to your feet? The piano is playing. I want to give you a moment. Just come. Get on your knees. We'll have a word of prayer. When everybody's up here that wants to come.